Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You know, when you spend your time on the internet, especially on YouTube, you get to see all kinds of things that you don't expect to see. As a guy who's always speaking about Africa, who believes that the potential for Africa lies in its youth, I come to you today to say that I am disappointed. And the reason for my disappointment is because sometimes the people that you try to believe in get to say and do things that make you question why you believed in them in the first place. That make you feel like they betrayed your trust. I don't know why Africans are doing this when I day after day keep saying that the potential for Africa lies in its young people. We know that Africa's population is a young population meaning that a great majority of Africans are young people. The future of the continent lies in this young people. Let me explain myself. I watched a video, I think, last year of President Obama addressing the African Union. And there's a portion of the video where he was talking about how some leaders, especially in Africa, like to stay in power forever. When I watched that video, I thought he was making a very good point. And I thought maybe African leaders would listen to him. Now I happen to revisit a portion of that video that is uploaded on YouTube. And I read the comments that people that I suppose are Africans made under that video. That's when my heart sank to my feet. I could not believe what I saw. I couldn't believe my eyes. People were criticizing Obama. Talking about how he doesn't understand Africa, how he cannot come from America, where he is failing, apparently, to come and tell Africans how they can lead Africa. Do these people sometimes think, before they make the comments that they make on YouTube, or because they think they are protected by the anonymity that their names and their profiles on YouTube are cause them, that they can say whatever buffoonery and stupid, I actually don't want to call anybody stupid. I'm going to try in this video not to call anybody an idiot. But I don't want to believe that people actually think that it's okay for leaders to stay in power forever and ever. If you get on the internet today and look at the leaders that have served for a very long time, the leaders that have stayed in power for a long time, in the top 20 list of the countries, you see that there is at least 12 African states. And none of those countries is actually doing really well economically. I'm not saying there's a direct connection between leaders staying in power forever and countries not performing well economically. But I'm saying it's usually not a good thing for us to think that there's only one person, there's only one man in the entire random country in Africa who is capable of leading that country. People cannot stay in power forever. That's why we have constitutions that limit the power of presidents such that they can lead up to a certain time and then they can pass the button to somebody else to take over. But these people that commented on the video seem to imply that it's okay for people to stay in power forever and keep leading and leading African countries hell-bent on running these countries into the ground. I'm failing to understand all this. I know Obama doesn't understand Africa and I'm not going to claim, I'm not going to sit here and claim to you that I understand every African country and the needs of the different African countries. But if there's something that I understand is to look at the facts, ladies and gentlemen, the facts that are provided for us are that people who stay in power forever don't usually do so much good for their countries. And now people actually believe that there is one man in a random African country who is capable of running that. You want to tell me today, right now, that in a country of about 2 million people, of a country of about a million people, a country of about 47 million people, there is just one person who is capable of leading that country. All those advisors the cabinet, the heads of ministries, the permanent secretaries, the PhDs in economics, the PhDs in leadership, the PhDs in politics, none of those people, the people that actually advise the president, none of those people are capable of actually taking their country forward and that there's only one man who's capable of doing that. You want to tell me now that in the entire continent of Africa, 
There's just 54 people that are capable of leading African countries. 54. I'm talking about over a billion people in the continent. And 54. 54 is all we can get as leaders in this continent, as presidents, as heads of state. That's what you want to tell me. Are you guys serious? And what measure did you use to determine that the country has absolutely nobody else that can be able to run that country, that can be able to lead that country as president, as, as a head of state? And if that president wants to stay in power forever, what happens tomorrow when he actually lives, he could die? He could get too old, just not be able to speak, to write, to reason. What happens when that comes around? What's the point of having a vice president if he's not capable to take over should something happen to the president? Are you guys just having vice presidents just for show and tell? Not because they're capable of doing anything. I'm really battling to understand this. How a continent as big as Africa, with such a huge population, with people that have gone to school, your governments take you to educational systems in Australia, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Norway, all over the world, to learn science, to learn economics, to learn politics, whatever you guys learn. And you get your PhDs, you come back to Africa, and you want to tell me that none of you people is capable of leading a country. Being a president is not like it's a man who is sitting behind a computer typing, programming a certain software that will lead a country. No! We're talking about a man who has advisors, a man who is supposed to listen to people, a man who has people around him, people that can advise him on how to run a country better. But then these people come on YouTube and they start saying that it's okay for people to stay in power forever and ever. I don't quite get this. I need you people to help me understand why it's okay to have such a thought. Why it's okay for young people, people that read books, I hope you guys read books, to think that it's okay for a leader to stay in power forever and ever. I can't, I can't believe you guys are serious. And I can't believe sometimes when I see people criticize those that say certain leaders are not doing things right. If you're not doing things right, you're not doing things right. 